Okay, friends, so years and years ago when I was teaching this class in the basement of a library at COCC, um, I love this chicken example. I, I use it whenever I do the binomial because it is kind of a perfect example of the binomial. Uh, but I remember I was teaching it one day and there was a guy that worked at COCC named Mike Smith. Uh, he worked here for years. I'm not exactly sure what he did while he was here. But I remember that day, uh, as I finished up class and kind of walked out, he walked up and he's like, I got a bone to pick with you. Okay, Mike, what's up, buddy? <laughs> he said, I heard what you were talking about chickens, and I heard you say that there's a 90% chance that chickens should be girls, pullets should be girls. I was like, yeah, it's, that's what Joel told me at High Desert. Said, that's what they told me, too. I said, so why are you upset? And he said, well, because I bought seven pullets, and when they grew up, I had a rooster, and I'm upset about that. So I, I said, come inside, let's do some math. And we did. And uh, what's interesting about it is you don't actually have to create the entire distribution of how many girls you get if you buy seven pullets, like we did in the previous examples. I mean, I did that in the first day because I wanted you to be able to set up these distributions. Um, but in order to do this, of course, you have to come up with all those combinations of, you know, if you've got seven birds and three of them are girls, how many ways can that happen? Um, the only thing I had to explain to Mike, looking back at this distribution, is this line down here. And since this line down here tells us the chance of all girls, that means the chance of getting at least one boy has to be everything else. So since there's a 47% chance of getting all girls, that means there's a slightly better chance that somewhere in there you're going to have a boy. And that's one of the more powerful tools of the binomial. The idea of all or not all or none, or at least one. The idea that you can isolate one row of the binomial. I had you starting doing this uh, back in, I guess it was project two. The idea of if you need the, the probability of, of at least one, you can do one minus the probability of none. You can still do that now. But what's cool about the binomial is it allows us also to filter down into something when things are binomials. So it's super powerful in that respect. Um, however, I don't want us to get hung up in the formulaicness of the math. Like, on, in day one, when we filled the board with distributions, there was a lot of nitpickery going on in there. And in the last video for today's playlist, I'm going to show you a derivation of the mathematics of that formula. Or at least a part of that formula, the coefficient part, the binomial coefficient as it's known. But what I want to do now is I want to explore the next sheet of the Excel calculator, which actually generates binomial distributions for you. And rather than focusing on the formula for the binomial rows, we're going to look at the average and the standard deviation of the binomial, which is something you can obviously calculate by hand. We did it with uh, in the last topic of, bi of uh, probability distributions. But there's actually really, really slick formulas for that. So let's take a look at that next.